So we had the Dynamite show, which opened up with Brian Danielson and Dustin Rhodes for the AW. It's in the title tournament first round, and the match was great. I mean, Dustin is so good. When you think about how long this guy's been wrestling, and not only that, the the things that he has done to his body for years until he got himself clean. And now he's out there. He's like 53 years old. I thought yeah, he was... I think he's 53. I think he's probably 52, though. Yeah, I thought he was great in this match. Brian Danielson's always awesome. I'll tell you what. Brian Danielson, for his age, is in fantastic shape. He's a machine. I mean, he never gets tired. His bo- he, Physically, his body looks much better than, than he did in WWE. And sometimes people will go, um, oh, so he's doing shit. But I can pretty much assure you he's not doing shit. He's just in great shape. And, you know, watching this match, just the guy doesn't get tired. Like those, those, you know, all those things like, you know, kicks, when you do like a whole bunch of them, it takes a lot out of you. And, um, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I, I think that, um, he's going to be one of these guys kind of like the, uh, the, the singles version of the Young Bucks where every single time they're in a match on TV, it's going to be like an excellent match. I just think he had an excellent match with Bobby Fish. Um, he's probably going to have an excellent match with Eddie Kingston. Did you see the interview with him and Eddie Kingston? No. Very interesting interview. Um, basically, Brian Danielson says that Eddie Kingston's got a great heart, and Eddie Kingston's, uh, you know, like fights hard and, and everything like that, and he really wants it. But Eddie Kingston doesn't put in the work. And he just goes, You don't put in the work, and you're not going to beat me because. You cannot, in this week, do enough work to catch up to my 20 years of work. And, um, you know, basically a thing of like, yeah, you know, you you don't train, you know, like you you you're a good you're a good worker, but you don't train. And uh, it was just interesting that he did that. And, they, you know, there's promo back and forth. And, you know, nobody out promos at Kingston. And I mean, it was designed. It was what it was designed to be. I mean, it's not like oh, they had like some shoot promo duel and Brian Danielson looked better. But it was like when you watch it, I think Brian Danielson did it to be sort of heelish because Eddie. You know, it's like the dynamic of the match is probably going to be Brian Danielson as a subtle heel, um, very very subtle. I'm going to guess because um, Eddie Kingston's not going to be a heel. Um, so that was probably just like his mentality of how to make it work by Well if you watch all of Danielson's matches, I mean he's clearly a babyface and he works as a babyface, but also in a in a mildly heelish manner. I mean, he tortures these people with with a kind of violence that you normally see out of a heel, but he is a babyface. Yeah, and, but I mean, uh, the match with Dustin, I did not. At I, this, the match with Dustin was a total babyface, babyface match, and the match with Kingston will be a babyface, babyface match. But I think that he was just doing that for, with the idea of just, you know, coming up with a story, you know, rather than just have two baby faces just go out there. Oh, well, sure. So that was his. That was his. And story this this was a babyface match. match, but this match was also he worked this match in a way where. He was giving Dustin the big fiery baby face comeback at the end when he hit yeah. those kicks, and then Dustin just all of a sudden stops selling and goes, "Kick me again, motherfucker!" or whatever he said, and he yeah. makes his big fiery comeback and he hits this Larry, it's his pile driver. The place is going crazy, and finally Danielson puts him in a, a guillotine, uh, the Roman Reigns guillotine, actually, and uh, and Dustin went out. So Brian Danielson moves on in the tournament. So the gimmick is is that Brian Danielson in every single match wins differently. Like yeah. Not. I don't know how how long. Eventually, if he has enough wins, um, maybe he'll repeat a finish. But right now, the gimmick is is that he, doesn't, he never repeats a finish, um, which is the exact opposite of what they want you to do in WWE. WWE, it's always about getting the finish over, and usually in AEW it is as well. But he wants to do it this way and. You know, they're not micromanaging. It's kind of like, this is his idea, and no one's there to say, ah, oh, no, we don't do this. So, this is what he's doing. We had a promo with the Elite backstage where Kenny Omega's just cutting this promo on Hangman Page, and 
in the background, it's like Nick and Matt, and they're laughing at all of his lines, and Adam Cole's, you know, it was just, they're such awesome, awesome heels. And he basically said that uh, instead of chanting cowboy shit, the fans are going to be chanting coward shit. And all the heels probably. have, ah, ha, ha, what a line that was. Yeah, prob- probably not. <laughs> We had a uh, promo with uh, FTR and Tully where they want to win the AW Tag Team titles to prove they're the greatest tag team of all They're already the greatest luchador tag team of all time, they have noted. And then Penta well, they responded. Have held, they have held the belts for a couple of days. That is true. And uh, Penta and Alex Abrahantes, uh basically told them that revenge was coming. We had a segment with Sting. If Sting comes down to the ring, he's going to speak on Darby's condition. But before he can say a word, out comes MJF. And MJF is just getting so much heat from this crowd. And he cuts a promo on them about how Darby Allen's in the same spot as Sting's buddy Lex Luger. He's in a wheelchair. And, of course, Sting punches him out, and the pinnacle runs down. And there's a great spot where Sean Spears hits him with a chair, and Sting does his no-sell spot. But then he gets jumped again, and he gets beaten on and the fans are chanting for Darby. There's no Darby. MGF sits down in a chair with Sting, and he cuts a promo and says, if you ever come back, this is how you're going to end up. I'm the past, present, and the future of pro wrestling. And they go to leave, but then they come back, and he knocks out Sting with the dynamite diamond ring. Very good segment. I know it's a shocker, but an excellent promo by MJF. Yeah, he's... Uh... He's tremendous. He's tremendous on promos for sure. He's, uh, and I mean, he, he feels like a guy who's going to have that. He, I could, I would not be surprised to see him with that title belt. Um, not like right away. Shouldn't be right away, but not so far away either. You know, like I would say, like within a year. Uh, I well, think it's probably going to go from hangman to a heel. He and he, he would probably be the choice. Um, because it's just, I think it's time to, I mean, he's pretty established, but I think it's time to establish him as, at that next level up. Britt Baker promo, cut a promo on Ty Conti. She had some line about how all you've done here is show your ass, and I'm going to yep, beat was... your ass at full gear. Yep. We had Ruby Soho and Penelope Ford, and there were a lot of botched spots in this match which is the uh, second week in a row, I believe, that Penelope Ford has been in a match with a lot of botched spots. Yeah, this and, one was way, way, way more over with the crowd, though. You know, like, the crowd was very into Ruby Soho, and um, and there was some good stuff in this match, too, but it um, wasn't all good, yeah. So the knuckles got thrown into the ring, but the referee saw him. He booted him out of the ring, and Penelope's all upset, but then she gets rolled up and pinned, and then uh, Bunny and... Uh, Penelope go after Ruby. Red Velvet runs down and make the save, so that'll be tag a tag team. team match. Yeah, but first it's going to be the Bunny against Red Velvet in the TBS tournament. And also Ruby Soho and Chris Statlander is next. Yeah, which is interesting because it's two total baby faces. Um, I mean, from the bracketing, I sort of see this going down to um, it could be Thunder Rosa, but 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 um, I sense Ruby Soho as, as one finalist, and the other finalist would be either Jade Cargill or, um, uh, what was I going to say, um, uh, uh, Thunder Rosa. We had an MGF promo backstage with uh, Spears and Wardlow. Wardlow's all upset that he shoved him into Sting last week, and MGF apologizes. He's kissing his ass. And they says, Wardlow, you've been doing a lot of hard work, but what we need is an accountability buddy. And that will now be Sean Spears. And he walks off, and they're both flabbergasted at what this means. So we had a Bobby Fish-Anthony Green match, and the match went like a minute. And the whole point was Bobby Fish won. And then after winning, he went back in and started beating down Bobby Green or Anthony Green again. And so he pounds on him, and CM Punk runs down to make the save. So the whole point of this was to establish that Bobby Fish is a heel, and... I guess we'll either see this match on TV or no, no. CM Punk and, and Bobby Fish is going to be on um, Dynamite on this this coming Wednesday. So this coming Boston. Wednesday, okay. So I was wondering Wednesday. because I I remember on the uh, Notepad 
they had uh, they had CM Punk and Wardlow. And I was like, that's a weird match. Yeah. I watched this and I thought, maybe, maybe CM me- Punk watched Bobby Fish and wanted him at the pay-per-view. I don't know. No, no, apparently it's not, not. It'll be this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They that's then maybe that's where they'll shoot the angle with uh, with Wardlow. We had, so the, which which if you think about it, that would if he's going to work with Wardlow, you would think that the next program would be CM Punk against MJF. Um, MJF, right? So that's that could be what they're building, um, which would be CM Punk's first like main event program. We had Dante Martin and Leo Rush backstage. Dante seems to want nothing to do with Leo Rush, but he's there with him every week, and he's going along with everything he says, so I'm not sure what exactly is going on here, but it's going to be Leo Rush and Dante Martin against the Seidel brothers, and Dante was not happy about this. That would probably be a great match. Yeah. But but um, Dante, like, he definitely needs work, like lots and lots and lots of work on promos. So... Um, all he can, you know, I mean, he wasn't good, but all, you know, he, he's 20 years old. He's got time to get good. But that's the, that will, you know, he, he just needs to work. As, he works as hard in promos as he does on his in-ring. Hopefully he will be a good promo as well. We had Eddie Kingston, Lance Archer. We talked about this match, the uh, big bump there at the end where poor Lance Archer landed right on his head. And they had a long, a long discussion with the referee and the trainer and finally, they uh, just send him back in the ring, and Kingston rolls him up and pins him. They had Tony Nese in the crowd watching on, so apparently he's coming in. And yeah. next round is noted, Kingston and Brian Danielson, which is next Friday. Yeah, it's interesting on Nice. I mean, Nice is a very good technical wrestler. He's got a very good body as well. But I just, um, he's very much lacking in charisma. So, um you know, I don't know all the details of everything different, but um, of the guys that were cut, I I would have I would have picked Buddy Murphy above him, but you know maybe there's reasons that you you know that you didn't go that, but but to me like Buddy Murphy is is or Buddy Matthews is a new name, maybe Buddy Matthews just wanted to work in Japan, who knows? Because that's where he's going. But um, I just sense that uh, that would be a guy who's. You know, I mean, him and Nice are both good workers, but I think he's like way more advanced in the personality department. We had Dan Lambert and uh, Men of the Year in the ring, and uh, Ethan Page cut this long promo and uh, talked about how he and Sky were the future of the company, not this PR nightmare, Sammy Guevara. And of course, Sammy comes out and uh, he tells this fat faced dipshit Dan Lambert to tell everybody what these stipulations are. And so Lambert says, what we're going to do here, there's going to be a 10-man tag at full gear if you put the TNT title on the line next week against Ethan Page. Even though Scorpio Sky is the one that's pinned Jericho twice. Or got Mm -hmm. the two big wins. But it's going to be Ethan Page next week, and the stipulation is if he loses, if Guevara loses, he loses the title and he must leave the inner circle forever. And Sammy says, I accept, but if I win... We get to choose the members of America's top team that we'll be facing at the pay-per-view. So the heels go up to beat him up, but then out come the rest of the inner circle. Obviously not Jericho because he's on the cruise, and they chased away the men of the year. We had an awesome promo with John Moxley. He's backstage, and he says, I'm supposed to be yelling and screaming about this tournament, but I just want everyone to know that I don't care about this tournament. I don't care about the championship. I don't care about anything. The only thing I care about is is my daughter. Ratings and demos and... Twitter. uh, What people are saying on Twitter. What people are saying on Twitter. He doesn't care about any of that. Um, He says, my daughter grabbed my finger, my broken finger, I might add. His broken pinky. And I looked in her eyes, and that's all I care about. All I care about is getting home in one piece. And the only way I'm going to get home to my daughter in one piece is I need to go through this tournament. I need to ruin some people. He says, this thing's like an alley fight. Everyone's going to the alley and one man's coming out. And you know who that man's going to be. This promo was great. It was a good promo. Yeah. We had Jungle Boy great, but it was good. <laughs> versus Brandon Cutler. This no. Brandon Cutler is the greatest geek, I think, in the history of pro wrestling. 
And uh, Jungle Boy destroys him, snare traps him. And then afterwards, he says, that felt like a good warm-up. Challenges anybody from the Elite to come out and fight. And, of course, uh, nobody comes out, so he puts Cutler back in the snare trap. And finally, Adam Cole comes out, who gets a huge baby face pop. And he cuts his promo on Jungle Boy, which is a distraction for the Young Bucks to hit the ring. They kill Jungle Boy. They BTE trigger him on the ramp. They throw him off the ramp through a set of tables on the floor. Jungle Boy is dead. And I watched this and I thought, it's got to be Adam Cole and Jungle Boy at the pay-per-view with Jungle Boy getting his big win. They have to be. Um, I mean, it could be, but the plan was um, Young Bucks against Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus and, and Christian Cage against Adam Cole, but they couldn't do an, an angle with Christian Cage because he was working the Impact pay-per-view tonight. Hmm. Well, at some point, Jungle Boy needs to beat Adam Cole. Yeah, I mean, he could. Because all of these previous uh, times that they've been in the ring together, I just Adam have this Cole hunch. pins Jungle Boy every time. I- I just have this hunch that Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus are going to beat the Young Bucks. Oh, if they face the Young Bucks, they're absolutely going to win. Yeah. Because it's time for them to get a big win. The titles aren't on the line. It's not going to hurt the Young Bucks one bit to lose to them. It's only going to help Jungle Boy. So I I couldn't even fathom the Young Bucks winning that match. I mean, I could fathom it if they want to build them up for a championship match, but I don't think that... They're going to go in that direction so quick, so I would presume that Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus win, just because the Young Bucks have beaten Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, you know, in the past. So we got uh, Dynamite this coming Wednesday live, Elite versus Dark Order, Sammy versus Ethan Page, TNT title, Karshida Serena Deeb in the TBS tournament, and CM Punk versus Bobby Fish. So the eight man, the, the, the Elite against the Dark Order, it's... Uh, Young Bucks, Omega, and um, Adam Cole against Stu Grayson, Evil Uno, Colt Cabana, and, and John Silver. So, the, you know, like that match is going to be great because every match with, you know, you got the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and Adam Cole. It's just like it's, no matter who they're wrestling, they're going to give them, a, they're going to give them a lot. I mean, they'll probably win, but they'll give them a lot, and it'll probably be a great match. So, yeah. And then next Friday, we have got Brian Danielson, Eddie Kingston, and Leo Rush and Dante Martin versus the Seidel brothers. Yeah, so that should be a really, that should be a really good show. Um, Brian Danielson. I mean, like like I said, I just sense Brian Danielson's going to have a great match with everybody that he's in the, in the ring with now. So the main event was Cody Rhodes and Malachi Black, and this match was fascinating. Was he- it was heated as hell. There was so much heat, and it was interesting because early, they just absolutely hated Cody, and then later, they would cheer well, for you know him. What? Uh, well, you know what? It's, it's not that. It was a mixed crowd. Well, no, no. It, of- it was very specific what was happening. They were into Malachi Black at the beginning of the match. Cody, but there were chan- there were chance for Cody. There were there were chance for Cody early on too. It was yes, a mi- but it was it was it was it was, it was a it was a mixed crowd. I mean, it was more for for a black, but it was it was not like you know. I mean, it was it was a mixed crowd. It wasn't like in the past. They did this match. What I saw, they did this match, and there was a point where Cody was getting the crowd behind him during his comeback. But every time that he went for the crossroads, oh, the people the booed the entire crossroads. crowd. It was not the entire crowd. It was it, it was it was not thunderous no, was, booze when he went for that crossroads. It was thunderous booze. It was thunderous booze. But it was no. This was a. What happened was there was a, a, a large element of the crowd that was for Cody. There was a larger element of the crowd that was for Black. But the crowd that was for Black, they wanted Cody to lose so bad. So every time he went for that finisher, they booed like crazy. But, I mean, you, if you looked at the actual fans, okay, because I did, when you look at the actual fans, you can see that it's very mixed. But, you know, when you when there's a lot of booing, it, it, it you know, it drowns out the cheers. And, but... The people, like, the the one thing that was very evident... <laughs> there were no cheers when he went for that crossroads. Zero! No, because it... No, until he hit it. Then when he hit it, there were, but the thing was, it was the people that were there, I mean, the people that were the loudest, they did not want to see that crossroads because they did not want to see, of everything else, the, the match, whatever, it was like they did not want Cody Rhodes to win the match, and those the people who were like that, they booed like crazy, but if you look at the crowd, there was a lot of people in the crowd that were for Cody, too, 
but like I said, like, um, you know, I mean, the thing, you know, there, there's a real element, you know, in this crowd and, and in most crowds where I think the idea is, is they, they just wanted, blo- I mean, like, I even know when I talked about this match like a week ago and I said, you know, Cody's probably going to win because that's what would make sense. People were just furious. They just don't want, they did not want Cody Rhodes to beat him. I, I don't think that they, um, you know, and they double juice and everything. It was a real, it was a real heated thing. They loved Arn Anderson. Um, you know, it was just, uh, it was just an interesting mix. But yes, every time he went for the crossroads, the, 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 the crowd booed him like crazy because they didn't, they did not want the win. So there was a spot at the end where they did a crossroads off the apron through a table. And they go through this table. They didn't boo that one. They go through this table, and they both come up bleeding, and they laid there, and they laid there, and they laid there, and Cody starts looking to the back, and then he goes over and he starts talking to the referee. Then the referee hits the gimmick on his belt, and finally Andrade walks down the aisle. So I think Andrade missed his cue. Because he was clearly supposed to come out much, much earlier than he did. So he finally comes down to the ring. And Jose jumps in the ring. Arn hits Jose with the spine buster. Black hits Arn with the mist. Pac runs down. He brawls to the back with Andrade. And then, I think, because Andrade apparently took so long to get out there, they are rushing the last few minutes of this match. Black hit his black mask kick. And Cody f- slumps down in the ropes, and the referee goes to pull him away, and Cody's, boom, back on his feet doing spots, because there was like two minutes left, and they had to get everything that they were getting in. And finally, he hit the crossroads, and the Cody Cutter, and the Tiger Driver 98, and pinned him, and the show's off the air, so... They were rushing there in the last couple of minutes, but it was a very fun match, very exciting uh, match, I, great I, crowd... I, I, I thought it was a great match, you know, just with the blood and the and just everything, uh, you know. I, thought, I uh, the, so they they you know the show opened with a great match and ended with a great match. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.